Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're now tuned to CFRE 91.9 FM. It is your man, DM Cool. You're now tuned into Cool Radio. Welcome back to the show. If you're just tuning in, uh, you are tuning in with my man Kamikachi Juice in the building. Yo, yo, yo. He already know it's Toronto's party starter. Uh, we're about to get the party started on this next segment right here. This segment is called Trip Talk, all right? So it's three topics, three of the hottest topics that happen uh, during the week that is in hip-hop and pop culture. So with that being said, let's get to it, shall we? Um, first on the docket, uh, there is a rapper by the name of Scheme who is alleging that he is Iggy Azalea's ghostwriter. Now, you already know the popular controversy that happened last year when uh, a few people, including Nicki Minaj, alluded to you know the allegations that Iggy Azalea is, in fact, getting her rhymes written by somebody else. Now, a lot of people either dismissed it or didn't really care about it. She, of course, dismissed it as well, too, not wanting to ruin her credibility, as if it isn't already ruined as enough as it is already, or already right now. Yeah. Uh, but news is coming out that this rapper who goes by the name of Scheme, who performed at South by Southwest recently, is saying that he played a minor role in it nonetheless. So, when you hear about that, Juice, do you think, you know, this person is telling the truth, or this could just be a way of getting his name out? Well... What did she have to say about it? She hasn't said anything about it yet, actually. She's actually sworn off of the social media recently. Already? Yeah. So we're not going to hear anything from her in a while, other than the singles. A lot of times when things like this happen, it, it, I don't see anything bad. It could be good publicity. Any publicity is good publicity. Yeah. It's good publicity for her, because uh -huh. now it's going to make people take in her music more and mm -hmm. take her in more. Good publicity for him. I've honestly never even heard of him. I haven't either. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this, this could yeah. all be that type yeah. of point. I've never even heard of him, but now I might go YouTube and find out who Scheme is. That the name Scheme, of? yeah. Yeah, I might go find out who Scheme is now and try to check out his flow and maybe... Maybe I might become a Scheme fan based off of this whole controversy that mm -hmm. could be a lie, could not be a lie. You never know. Exactly. You never know, right? I mean, from a business standpoint, the music business, you know, is heavily rooted in yeah. songwriters giving their songs off to other artists as well, too. So from that standpoint, I'm not mad at it. Yeah. I think from the rap perspective, you know, the MC perspective, yeah. if you have someone else writing your rhymes, then like you're whack or whatever. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it's like I find it to be a bit contradictory because then would you say the same thing about an Easy E who had his rhymes written by yeah, Ice Cube and Dr. Why. Dre? Would you say that Dr. Dre is whack because he had his rhymes written by Snoop Dogg, yeah. by Eminem, by Kendrick, by Lil Wayne, by so many other different artists? Yeah. By, um, I mean, Jermaine Dupri, he had his rhymes written by other artists as well, too. Like, So you have to kind of go back and say, hey, are these artists whack as well? So, yeah, definitely not. Exactly. So I find that it'll, it'll be interesting to see what Iggy says, if she says anything yeah. at all. But I feel like her reputation is just snowballing yeah, yeah, ever yeah. since the whole uh, the whole Azealia Banks thing happened between those two. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, most likely, I don't even think she would say anything. Because the fact, like, just like I said, I never even heard of He might be huge where he's from, yeah. but she's on a worldwide scale. Exactly. So for her to even entertain it, yeah. it might be not even worth it. It would be it. smarter for her not to entertain yeah. it. Because she's been entertaining a lot of other people, yeah. and that's kind of brought her down a little bit. So I think whoever her publicist is or whoever is in her ear, like T.I. or whomever, should just tell her, yo, yeah. back just off. Calm down, yeah. keep doing your thing, whatever. Sometimes a quiet role is the best way for role to play. Exactly. <laughs> just take a pa hand page out of Jay-Z's, man. Like, yeah. He just stays silent to anyone who doesn't deserve to get a diss. You know, like you said, you only get a half a bar, F y'all, <laughs> you already know what it is. Yeah. On that note, let's keep it moving now. Let's uh, talk about some more rappers. So, actually, you know what? Since we are talking about Jay, actually, let's move on to this particular subject. Dan Dash uh, was in news recently, uh, yeah, yeah, last yeah. week, for his little tirade on how, you know, people who work under others aren't real men, quote-unquote. So he caught a lot of backfire, and there's even a gang of tweets that are just roasting him about the whole thing in the first place. I, for one, took no exception to it whatsoever. I partook in that, yeah. as y'all saw in the video recently. Make sure you go watch it on YouTube.com slash Cool Radio. Um, so basically, he went on social media, and <laughs> mind you, he said in his, in his little diatribe that real men don't get their news on social media, and real men don't talk about other men, you know, stop being chatty patties, yeah, as, as what that. he called it. But the ironic thing is, he went on Twitter to have an argument with the child, or with the mother of his child, oh, really? about mm -hmm. wanting to see his daughter and to have custody of her. Over Twitter? Over okay, Twitter. I didn't, I didn't hear over that. social media. Yeah. A tool that, quote unquote, real men don't use. Don't yeah. use. 
So, when you hear the, the hypocrisy of all this, what, what's your okay, take? Okay, well, that's... That is, the information is new to me. I knew everything up until that part. Okay. Yeah, but that's kind of crazy that he would do that because he was going in on the on the, on the Breakfast Club. He was yes. about being a chatty patty. And exactly. Real men don't talk. Real men don't gossip. And real right. Men don't, and he kept, he was he was pretty firm. He wouldn't even talk to these guys like unless he yeah. was, or answering a question or something mm-hmm. or he asked a question something like that. But you know what? I chalk it up to ignorance from the hood. Yeah. Basically. Because he's saying how you're not a real man if you don't do this, you're not a real man if you do that. And I think it's all of that quote-unquote ghetto bravado that he's built up over the years, being the street hustler and what have yeah. you. But my thing is, if you're, if these people aren't, you know, quote-unquote real men, then what does that make you? Were you not a real man when you were getting your supply of drugs from, from your dealer when you were hustling in the streets? Were you not a real man when you were technically working under somebody when you and Jay-Z had Rockefeller Records under other uh, different record labels for yeah. distribution purposes, mm-hmm. like Priority, like Def Jam? Was Russell Simmons not your boss at one point in time? Like, so these are the contradictions that I find with Dame Dash and his little diatribe that I find quite annoying and perplexing to see. Yeah, it's because he, he has it now, but he didn't have it 20, 30 years ago. But even then, like, what does he have now? I mean, like, I does it... Matter of fact, you know, hands in the air right now, and this is for the people in the studio. Hands in the air right now, if you know the name of Damon Dash's business. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no hands in the air? No hands? No hands? See my look, ma. No hands. Yeah, that's why I thought, Dame. You're, you're out here yeah. losing. Because he was talking He was talking about, like, his glasses is his company. His yes. Is his company. He was talking about, like, everything he wears is his own company, but I... But I, no one knows about it, though. I don't know what the company is. No one knows about it, and he's still paying taxes at the end of the day, right? Yeah. So he's someone's, So he's basically working under the government, then, yeah. as is everyone. Yeah. And even if you are a CEO, you have to answer to a board of directors at the end of the day. Yeah. So this guy's losing. And yeah. another thing that I said last week was he had Murder Mook and some, you know, ragamuffin-looking dude beside him. <laughs> Talking about, yeah, I, I work with these guys in the hood, they're my yeah. mentors, whatever. But they're working under you. So what are you trying to say to them? Are they not real men? Murder Mook is starting to Rough Riders. Is he not working under somebody? So, again, the, right. the hypocrisy, is, I think it's just insecure. It's just insecurity at the end of the day. A lot of times, yeah, that's what causes people to be ignorant. Exactly. Yeah. And he never lost that, that, that hood ignorance, so to speak, basically. He's still talking like he's still relevant, like it's 1999 when Rockefeller Records <laughs> was basically competing with Murder, Inc. And even then, like, he wasn't really the focal point of that. Jay-Z was. Hell, even Kareem Biggs Burke had more of a role in Rockefeller yeah. than he did, it seems like. I feel like, in my opinion, I'm not just saying this because Diddy, or sorry, not Diddy, but because Nas said this. That you know he's kind of like the puff daddy of the whole of the whole thing, just kind of taking credit wherever he can. Yeah, technically. So, yeah, that's how he made it seem too. Exactly. So I just find it funny that he's talking all this jazz. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he's still working for somebody. But again, hey, that's <laughs> none of our business, right? <laughs> A sip some tea, gentlemen. A sip some tea. Well, you actually have this this sound in the background too. Of course I do, man. Of course I do. I come prepared, boy. <laughs> All right. That was for you, Dan. Now, final topic that I want to get to. This one's kind of like a three and one kind of topic, and yeah. I'm curious to get your your take on this as well too. Um, so a couple big things happened in the week of hip hop. Um, so the first thing that happened was first and foremost, Kendrick, uh, his numbers for To Pimp a Butterfly came out, and he topped the charts first time in his career. Uh, with over 330,000 units sold in the first week. So congrats to him on that. Yeah. Huge. By the way, if you haven't listened to that album, crazy album. It's deep. It's very I deep. took it in. I love it. Um, second thing, J. Cole released a video for his record, which is called uh, G.O.M.D. off of his 2014 Forest Hills Drive uh, album. And basically, the video has a slavery theme to it. He's basically... You know, the house, ne- not actually, yes, he's a house Negro in it because he's really? light skinned and what have you. So he gets to stay in the house. Meanwhile, all the, the dark skinned black people were working in the fields as the field Negroes, basically. So basically, the video is generally about him trying to gain acceptance from his darker skinned oh, brethren yeah. because, because he's in the house, he's quote unquote too yeah. good for them or whatever. So he's trying to shed that. So basically, where I'm trying to get at is I like how Cole and Kendrick are using their music to shed on certain topics that are happening within. Black America in particular, like like race and violence and things that kind of equate to sum both of them up, basically. They need and, to. Exactly. And they're also teaching lessons on how, you know, things were back in those days and what they are right now currently. Yeah. And so when you're that big of an artist, especially in hip-hop, and you're trying to spread that message, I can always appreciate that. 
Now, let's parlay this into Drake, all right? So Drake, mm-hmm. he's the biggest artist in hip-hop right now. That's yeah. undeniable. However, my personal opinion, and as much as I love Drake, I feel like he's taking it easy on his music. I feel like he knows what to do in order to stay somewhat relevant, yeah. but he's not pushing the envelope like a Kendrick or like a Cole. And I feel like that's going to kind of, you know, catch up with them because people are going to be are going to say to themselves sooner or later, we're going to select somebody else as the proverbial number one. So, Juice, do you have the same take on that, or is it kind of different? It's uh, it's like this. I feel like Kendrick and Cole, we needed rappers like that to mm-hmm. come out and spit some real knowledge, like back in the day with Nas and certain guys were spitting lyrics. Yes. Because I, I did take in the Kendrick, and it's lyrical, and he's talking yes. some positivity and a lot of good things on that album. Yes. Versus chilling in the six with my woes like that's kind of yeah. like it's catchy mm-hmm. it's for the club mm-hmm. you can go to a shisha lounge and smoke and enjoy it yeah and you know because she just knew all of a sudden because he yeah. popularized it <laughs> yeah, and, and enjoy it but he's yeah. making music literally directed for i guess for, for the culture in a sense mm-hmm. but kendrick and those guys are, are trying to spit that lyrical knowledge that mm-hmm. i don't know put it in their ear but yeah, the, the world needs it. Yeah, because it, it can't. We can't just always turn up, turn up, turn up. True. Twenty four seven. Even exactly. as a party promoter, yes. <laughs> you can't just turn up twenty four seven. You have to have your downtime. Yeah, you need to have that calm. Yeah, you need to have that calm. That's why I like their music as well. Yeah, because it's that calm and it's actual lyrical and it's it's positivity. Exactly. It's think. And it's something for everyone as well too. Yeah. My my only thing with Drake because I I expect so much from him and I like him. I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of his. Is that. <laughs> We have yet to see a classic album from him. Keep in mind, keep in mind, yeah. Kendrick already has three arguable classics under his belt already. Cole is working there. He's working towards that. With Drake, because he's so highly regarded as like the face of hip hop, I feel like you gotta have that classic under your belt. Think about it like this, and I don't wanna compare him to these guys, but you can't help but to because he's the leader of his generation. Nas first came out ill Mac. Classic. In my car right now. Jay-Z came <laughs> out with Reasonable Doubt. Classic. Got it. Snoop Dogg. Uh, Doggy Style. Yeah. Classic. Um, even, even someone as underrated as AZ came out with Do or Die. Yeah. Classic. Cultural classic at the very least. With Drake, we have yet to even have an album within that discussion at the very least. Like, it was first mixtape. Exactly. But that's a mixtape. Yeah, that's a that thing, was, right? You gotta put like an asterisk on that because yeah. of that. So like, I feel like Drake should have a sense of urgency where... He needs to like solidify his spot. Put it like this. Put it like this. Remember before LeBron went to uh, went to Miami, people were saying, "When are you gonna get it done? When are you gonna get yeah. it done?" Seven years in the league, bro. When are you gonna get it done? The chosen one is tatted on your back. Like, when is that ring happening? So I feel like Drake, if he's not under the same pressure right now, I feel like sooner or later he's gonna succumb to that same pressure. In a sense, yeah. But his sales is probably more than. Oh yeah. yeah, those guys. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. So, so that's kind of like just like an argument to say it's like the caveat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Versus because his numbers is probably more than anybody. It is. I mean, guy. even on if reading this is too late, I think he sold like five hundred k or something like yeah, that. Something yeah. stupid. Yeah. So at least he has the numbers working for him, and I feel like he's probably you know a bit comfortable because he has like that mainstream appeal firmly within his grasp. Yeah. With Cole, he kind of, he has like the urban mainstream appeal. Yeah. But with Kendrick, he's kind of like borderline. Because on one end, he already has an urban mainstream appeal, but on the flip side, this guy has memorable moments at the Grammys and the AMAs. He has yeah. Taylor Swift like tweeting him nonstop and what have you. By the way, I think they're doing a little something, something yeah. together. But hey, <laughs> that's just what I'm thinking. Yeah. I, I could be wrong, but I'm just saying, he's good. pipping that'd another be butterfly in the sheets, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah that'd be good. It, it would be good. It'd be that'd very be good, good, actually. I wouldn't knock it. That'd be good. I mean... I, when I saw Taylor Swift rocking out like it's a rave party yeah. at the Grammys when he was performing, you know, Mad City, I'm like, okay, something's <laughs> going on here. Yeah. You don't just get one of those popular country pop artists sitting in the front row with her yeah. friend, just, you know, just jamming out like, yeah. man, damn, where are you from? I'm not going to say that word. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just yeah. like, I don't know. That's just, that's just how my mind is running right yeah. now.